what's uh, troubling about the slow uh, jobless rate is the rapid rate of wage inflation. That's now running at four and a half percent. Chances are, if the economy continues to grow at a rate of uh, roughly 2% or faster, we are going to see a further tightening of the labor market. And with that, even faster wage growth. And that's going to be bad news for inflation, especially consumer services price inflation. If we so, want to get, get inflation yep. under c control, we've got to get wage growth down to something close to 3%. It's a good point. I take all of my business news from a sunburned egg. But anyway, that was economist John Lonsky on Maria Bartiromo's show on Fox Business to make sure that any conservative worker who's watching this knows that when they see that wages are at last going up, you should be very concerned about that. You know how we on Fox, Fox and Fox Business have been telling you that inflation is terrible and you can't afford to pay for literally anything and you're probably gonna go broke and you're probably gonna be destitute and now you're making more money? That's also bad. Both of those things are bad. You not making enough money is bad, but not nearly as bad as you now making money. That is truly cause for concern. So what they're responding to there is the fact that the jobs reports over the past few months have been good. And that does not mean that the economic troubles that have faced the vast majority of Americans are suddenly gone. A month or two of above average wage growth does not take away the fact that against inflation, people are in a worse position than they were several years ago. But with all that said, the fact that there are some good signs is enough to terrify Fox News and by proxy, their, uh, their viewers. Before we continue with the story, we depend on members to keep on going. Don't wait, click join now on YouTube. And so we've got what's being called blowout job growth as well as solid wage gains. You can see that the unemployment rate was just 3.7% last month. That means that below 4% two consecutive years of unemployment. That is the longest such stretch in more than 50 years. Now, if you were to like say that out loud on Fox News, that would make Biden look kind of good from the perspective of a business channel. But of course, they're not gonna say that, ignore it. More jobs were created in 2023 than previously estimated. And it wasn't just that jobs were made, that there are new jobs and that unemployment is low. That is like used as like a proxy for the health of the economy, generally by people who are more interested in the status of corporations than workers. And simply because jobs had been lost and there are now jobs does not mean that the jobs that have come have comparable pay and or benefits. So don't simply accept that one job is the same as any other job. But that said, when it's accompanied by indications that wages on average are going up and that the wage growth is outpacing the inflation that we've experienced over the past few months. If you care at all about workers, that certainly seems to be good news. But nobody can be surprised that this is what Fox is saying in light of wages going up. They have always, no matter how many times they whine and cry about being populist, they do not believe that workers should be paid. They do not believe that wages should under any conditions grow up. And I know that because I've seen them respond to it over the course of the past decade and a half. No matter the economic conditions, they will find an excuse for why it's supposedly bad for workers that they ever be paid more than they were the day before. And it is not just Fox, it's across all of right wing media. Matt Walsh can always be reliably counted on to tell the likely not wealthy conservatives who unfortunately listen to his show that they should never hope to earn more than they already do. And in particular, those who are in the less should expect the least. He said, you don't need a higher minimum wage. You just need to not be on minimum wage anymore. Because against every attempt that the world has made to educate him and other conservatives about the fact that those on minimum wage jobs are not just 14 year olds flipping burgers, but some full grown people desperately trying to make ends meet under incredibly difficult circumstances that a person whose job is exclusively commenting on stuff they don't understand could never understand. That some of them have two or three of these jobs that they're working just to be able to pay their ever increasing rent. He's going to assume that it's just the high school workers and that's it. You're supposed to have this job, you know, like he did. He did a summer at, you know, Dairy Queen or whatever, and then he moved on with his life, grifting to the right wing. Why don't you grift to the right wing, dear viewer? That's the empathy that he has for you. Laura Ingram goes beyond even that, saying that. 
it isn't just the input side, sort of your wages going into the economy that should matter. You shouldn't even care about the inflation that we demonize. She praised the companies that are doing shrinkflation, this, this idea that uh, while prices are going up for food, in some cases, it's even more dishonest than that, in that a company will keep the same container, but put less of the product in it, effectively robbing you of some percentage of the food in comparison to what you used to pay for it. Now, they imply that inflation is bad because saying that in the moment seems bad for Biden. But as soon as Biden is criticizing shrinkflation, suddenly the script flips and it's good that companies are robbing conservatives of their cookies and ice cream. Doesn't make sense to me, but I have not seen a right wing outcry against Laura Ingram for saying that. And again, the minimum wage stuff, that is not new at all. You can reliably expect that Fox News is gonna do that. One guest claimed that if the minimum wage went up at long last, after years and years and years and years of it being the same, the federal minimum wage, that that could lead to $15 Big Macs. And here, let me waste 15 seconds of your time. When you look at, for instance, McDonald's or Burger King's other chain restaurants that have both locations in the United States as well as internationally, and you go to the international ones, the workers are not paid $4 an hour, $7 an hour. They're paid more and they have benefits and they're allowed to unionize and many do. And yet, the burgers are not even as expensive as they are in the United States. I love when people like pretend to be curious about the world and propose hypotheticals that are not hypothetical. We actually have the evidence if they cared enough to actually look into it, but they definitely do not. And so all of this is to say, if you're a conservative and somehow you're still watching me, and I doubt that that's the case, I don't understand why you care so much about these people on TV who care so little about you and your economic situation and the prospects that that situation will ever improve. I understand that I'm a godless commie or whatever, but I want you to earn more money someday. I want you to be able to save and invest, perhaps own a home. I want all of that for you and more so, I want your kids to earn more money than you do now. Not a single one of these jackals can match me on that. And it's weird that you hate me but love them. <laughs>